Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, Kubernetes master class. Really happy to have you all uh, on the line with us for this more uh, advanced uh, training that Rancher does, uh, weekly almost. Um, we have a lot of people joining the line, so I'm just going to wait um, a minute as people uh, arrive. Uh, and while we're waiting, I want you all to know that this session is being recorded, so you will receive the recording and the slides after the training. Uh, we might also include the, the Q&A as well. Um, if we're able. Uh, so look for that in your inbox. So we have about an hour scheduled, but if you need to drop for whatever reason, you know, don't worry about it. You'll be able to review the session afterward. We'll post the video uh, on YouTube and email you the link as well. Uh, so there is a lot to go through. So I'm going to jump right in uh, as a way of introduction. My name is Matthew Shear, marketing manager here at Rancher. I help host these uh, sessions as well as our intro trainings. Uh, I have one tomorrow and one Thursday. So you might see me there. You can use me as sort of a, a a uh, point of contact uh, resource at Rancher. I included my email, Matthew at Rancher.com. Uh, I'm also on uh, the Rancher user Slack, uh, just simply at Matthew. So if you have a question, if you're looking for something, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm uh, happy to respond. Uh, but the woman who's really going to be doing the heavy lifting on the line today is Prachi, a principal software engineer. Uh, Prachi, are you there? Yeah. Hi, everyone. All right. Fantastic. Um, so just a couple housekeeping items before I pass this off to Prachi uh, and we go into what you guys are really here for. Uh, like I said, we have about uh, we have about an hour scheduled. We might go a little long if needed. We try to do our absolute best to answer every single question um, that comes our way. There are uh, just a ton of people on today's call, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to answer them all. Uh, but please do send them in and we'll try to follow up with you um, after. My request is just that to uh, keep the questions on topic uh, to the best of your ability. We do have, you know, other trainings um, on on other other topics, so um, just try to keep it related to uh, what we're going over today. Um, and as I said, the session is recorded. We will post it on YouTube, uh, and we'll send the link out. All of our uh, online trainings are on YouTube on a ton of different topics. Uh, you know, monitoring. Um, um, security, authentication, you know, what have you, we, we have it up there, so please check that out. Um, and for more uh, guidance and suggestions, I think most of you are probably already on these two resources, uh, the Rancher user, Slack, uh, hundreds of uh, members every day, thousands total, uh, but hundreds of people every day answering and asking questions. Our engineers are on there as well. Uh, we also post uh, the uh, slides and recording to the Masterclass uh, channel if you uh, want to get it that way. I mean, a couple last things, just a quick plug for our other classes that are coming up. Again, this stuff is all free, um, so check it out. Hopefully, it is of help to you guys. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing an intro to Rio training, intro application deployment engine, so-called, but it's a great way to, you know, to test and build and run your uh, stateless applications on Kubernetes clusters. Uh, and next week, we'll be doing uh, the support team be doing some fantastic sessions on uh, DR, disaster recovery, uh, and Kubernetes, and troubleshooting. So, so please do check those out. And one last thing, I just wanted to give a plug to our Writers Rancher, uh, Rancher Writers Network. If you, you know, use Rancher, if you, um, you know, think you have have uh, a use case or something that you've been doing that's really cool, that would be awesome to share. You know, please do. Like we have, um, you know, Ranch Hands. Uh, present on these classes as well. So you will get some fantastic street cred and help uh, your colleagues and your peers, you know, learn and grow with, with all this material because there is just so much to learn. So um, all of that being out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pass this to you, Prachi. So right. you can just dive right in. So let me find your name here uh, among the tons of people. Here we go. All right. Making you the presenter. All right. You see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. See your, see your slides there. You're good to go. All right. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Prachi Damle. I'm working as a software engineer at Rancher Labs. Uh, we are building the open source centralized platform for managing multiple Kubernetes deployments. So my talk today is about some techniques to harden your Kubernetes clusters uh, while using Rancher. I'm going to share and demo uh, some techniques that Rancher uses to build and manage 
secure Kubernetes clusters. So brief overview about uh, on the agenda today. Uh, we'll go over like what is the need for Kubernetes cluster security, especially CIS benchmark guide, CIS compliant cluster template, and what it is all about. Then the CNCF best practices that, uh, that have been published by CNCF and how they are implemented with Rancher. And as we go over these topics, I'll also demo or walk through these concepts on a Rancher cluster. So let's get started. As we all know, it's beginning to look a lot like Kubernetes everywhere. So there's currently a rapid adoption of containerized deployments and container orchestrators by all enterprises as well as open source communities. So as we look at securing these container uh, de deployments, let's look at how the security problem has evolved along with the evolution of server setups. Earlier, the applications were deployed directly on physical servers and they were sharing all the server resources. Thus, there were no resource boundaries or problems with resource allocation and contention were very common with these kind of deployments. Scalability was also hard to achieve and often it meant that adding multiple physical servers, so scalability was expensive. With this kind of server setup, the problems with security were securing access, uh, network access to your application, securing your node. Now, because of the scalability uh, and resource contention problems, the next step was virtualization, where multiple applications are deployed on VMs. VMs are full machines consisting of everything from application dependencies, file system, CPU, memory space to OS. All such multiple VMs can be run on single physical server. Now, this came up as a great solution because here we got the application isolation and resource boundary as well as a security boundary got established with this setup. One step further of this is where we are today is containers and containerized deployments. So containers are similar to VMs and have own resources like CPU, memory, process space, except that the underlying OS is shared across the container apps. Containers are thus lightweight than VMs and hence they are portable since they are decoupled from the OS. So along with containers, um, a microservice architecture also evolved, where instead of having one monolithic service, all the apps are now broken down into multiple microservices which can be developed and upgraded or maintained separately from each other. Now deploying and maintaining these microservices on containers, it needs a robust container orchestration platform and Kubernetes rose to fit the requirements. It is feature rich and extensible. It is designed for running critical workloads reliably. And most importantly, Kubernetes has a big open source community backing and a big ecosystem of tools and integrations. So as we have established the need for containerized deployments and Kubernetes, which is the container orchestrator of choice now, next challenge that we are on to is secure Kubernetes. So it is very important to have your containers or the apps that are being run as containers being secure. And over the uh, last few years, container security uh, has evolved uh, and we know that the way to achieve that is image scanning and image scanning early in the dev or build cycle is very important. Also using private registries or well-known repositories to download your images and runtime security policies and alerting. These are some of the techniques for achieving container security. So as we look at container security, the next problem is Kubernetes cluster security because Kubernetes is actually the platform or the foundation which is hosting these containers. As you can see here, Kubernetes itself is a microservice architecture made up of multiple components. There are master nodes and there are worker nodes. So securing Kubernetes cluster itself 
is also a topic of its own. It involves securing the nodes, the master node, worker node. It involves launching all the community's cluster components like Cube Scheduler, Cube API Server, Controller Manager, etcd, or the worker node components like Kubelet, Cube Proxy. All of them need to be started with correct parameters and with correct permissions so that the Kubernetes cluster is inherently secure and hard to break. Over the uh, past two years, we have seen that there's a wide scope of security threats with Kubernetes cluster. There have been a lot of security breaches and a lot of them have also been popular, like the one with the cryptocurrency mining malware infection or the API server security breach. Thus, Securing your Kubernetes cluster in order to deploy your critical workloads is very much important. So what are few principles in order to secure your Kubernetes clusters? So with Rancher, uh, Rancher takes care of uh, securing your Kubernetes cluster by following certain guidelines. So CIS benchmark guideline. Uh, is being followed by Rancher in order to publish a hardening guide, which you can follow in order to establish your node security. Also, some tools and techniques that Rancher has developed, for example, cluster templates, will help you minimize the errors involved in launching your cluster and also make sure your, that your clusters are always launched with consistent configuration. Also, as we have seen various Kubernetes security problems, CNCF then released um, a nine step guideline on nine security best practices. And once you launch a cluster using Rancher, you will see that all these nine security best practices are followed by Rancher uh, when we launch a cluster using Rancher or Rancher Kubernetes engine. So let's take a look at each of these further. So CIS benchmarks. CIS, the Center for Internet Security, has certain recommendations published. It is de facto standard for baseline security posture. So what are these recommendations? These are list of settings or controls per Kubernetes component. Also CIS uh, recommends which of these settings are scored and unscored. So once you launch your Kubernetes components as per these settings, you can also go and assess your Kubernetes cluster components according to the CIS guidelines and check what is the score of your Kubernetes cluster uh, on the CIS benchmark um, scale. Now the CIS benchmarks are updated per Kubernetes releases. So whenever a new Kubernetes release comes up and if there are new uh, parameters that are being made available, CIS benchmarks are also updated accordingly. In accordance with the CIS recommendation, Rancher has published few artifacts. One is the Rancher hardening guide and another is the Rancher's self-assessment guide. So the Rancher hardening guide is based off of controls and best practices which are found in the CIS Kubernetes benchmark. Um, and the hardening guide describes how to secure the nodes in your cluster. It is recommended to follow the hardening guide before installing your Kubernetes cluster. So this is about securing your nodes. There are various versions of the hardening guide uh, as per Rancher version, the CIS benchmark version, and Kubernetes version. Now the self-assessment guide is the second artifact available. This is a companion to the Rancher security guide. So the hardening guide shows you how to harden the nodes in your cluster. The benchmark guide is meant to help you evaluate or the self-assessment guide is meant to evaluate the level of security of your hardened cluster. Few other tools that are available uh, in line with this is a cluster template, which is CIS compliant. 
Now, cluster template is a feature that I'll talk about more uh, in the upcoming slides. So on Rancher Docs, there is a cluster template or an RKE template available with all the CIS recommended settings per Kubernetes component. So this is a CIS compliant template, which one can use to launch a cluster and that cluster will follow all the CIS recommended guidelines to start with. And if this template is used over and over, then a consistent compliant cluster will always be launched. There is also an upcoming feature in our upcoming release. It's an automated tool to run an on-demand CIS compliance check or a CIS scan for your entire Kubernetes cluster. So there are automated tools available like KubeBench or KubeHunter, and this Rancher's automated tool internally makes use of KubeBench, and it deploys it on all the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster, gathers the reports of the KubeBench tool, and publishes a cluster-wide uh, security report. Now, where do we find all these artifacts on Rancher documentation? So on Rancher Docs, on the Rancher site, there is Rancher Hardening Guide that is published. As I just talked about, the Hardening Guide is per Rancher version, per CIS benchmark version, per Kubernetes version. So currently Hardening Guides for Rancher releases 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.3.3 are available. Along with the hardening guide, there is a self-assessment guide also available. So after using the hardening guide, one can make sure that the nodes used for cluster are secure. And using the self-assessment guide, one can then go over the cluster components and nodes to assess themselves how secure your cluster is. Now, along with going over the self-assessment guide, one can also use the upcoming CIS scan tool, which is an automated way of doing the assessment. So this will be available in our next release 2.4 alpha 1, which uses KubeBench to uh, do the security scanning and self-assessment. Now, another thing that I wanted to show is also the CIS compliant cluster template. So once you go under a C, uh, hardening guide, you will see all the Kubernetes components and their recommended settings. And any recommended steps that one needs to take on every node or for the Kubernetes clusters are also documented. So as you can see, these are the Kubernetes cluster component parameters like kubelet or kubeapi server, etcd, all of them are documented in the Rancher hardening guide. At the end of the hardening guide, there's always a CIS compliant RKE template, that is Rancher Kubernetes Engine uh, cluster template available for one to use. So here you can find that there's an RKE template for Kubernetes version 1.14, 15, and 16. Now, what this template is, it's basically a YAML file and parameters per Kubernetes component. So for the Kubernetes version 1.16.3, this template has all the necessary parameters one should enable on say etcd, kube API, or kubelet, kube controller, and so on. Now, this is essentially the cluster.yaml file, which can be used on Rancher to launch a cluster. And such a cluster, will basically be CIS compliant to start with. So how do you do this? Now, let me go and walk through how to create a CIS compliant cluster template using this YAML file on a Rancher setup. So this is my Rancher setup. This is my global view after you log in. And here I have already have a Kubernetes cluster launched on DigitalOcean. Now on the global view, under tools, there is a tab called as RK templates. This is nothing but the cluster template. Here, you can say that add a template 
give it a name and then you can set all the Kubernetes settings on this template which will be followed in order to launch a cluster or if you already have a yaml file you can set that yaml file in here this is the one that i copied from the cis compliant uh, rk template documented on rancher and create the cluster template now each cluster template has uh, the basic configuration saved under cluster template revision further when i just added a template you also saw a share template tab now a cluster template can also be shared with other users of your rancher setup and it can also be made public so an admin basically can create a cluster template as per the recommendations that they want to push and they can then make the public uh, template public so that all the users can use this template to launch the clusters. Thus, any cluster coming up in the rancher setup can then follow the same settings and can be CIS compliant if the settings are as per the CIS guideline. How do you use such a template that has been created? So under rancher setup, when you add a cluster, you have to first select what kind of cluster you're going to add. So right now I'm adding a cluster launched by RK and the nodes that I'm going to use are provisioned on an infrastructure provider. Once I choose that, on this form, you have to fill up where you are provisioning, how you're provisioning the nodes from and what roles your nodes are going to follow. Along with this, then there is a tab of choice of using an existing RK template and the revision. So here well, you can choose the cluster template of your choice and also choose the version that, of the template that you want. Once a template has been created or it has been chosen here, all the Kubernetes settings that were set in the template are then set on the cluster. So the, cluster, the user that is launching the cluster cannot actually go and change any of these Kubernetes settings. So in this way, admin can enforce the Kubernetes settings or configuration that they want all the clusters in their setup to follow. So RK template is a powerful way of enforcing security guidelines. So going back um, a little bit more about the RK cluster template. So just to gloss over, as we see, this is predefining cluster configuration, so templating your cluster. So one can predefine the cluster configuration compliant to security benchmarks and push this configuration to all the users to follow. What can be baked in an RK cluster template? You can bake in CIS recommended Kubernetes settings to be applied to a cluster during creation. So settings per Kubernetes component, any default cluster op options like per Kubernetes version to pick up for, or cloud provider options, or pod security policy that you want to apply on your cluster. If your cluster wants to use network security policy, also any add-ons that you want your cluster to always have can also be specified in a cluster template. Along with this, there is always a need for the actual user launching the cluster to enter his own credentials or even use the Kubernetes version of choice. So in a cluster template, on a you know, RK template, the admin can also specify any of these parameters as overrides. What the overrides mean is these are settings to be answered by the consumer of the cluster template during creation. So the ease of operations and security policy enforcement. These are two important benefits of RK template. Ease of operations, cluster template allows an admin one-time cluster definition. It reduces complexity and does it reduces errors involved in deploying clusters. Also, since users use the cluster template where the configuration is predefined, it also ensures consistent Kubernetes clusters. 
cluster template also has template versioning support. So using templates versioning, you can maintain a history of your cluster configuration as well as updates and rollbacks of your cluster configuration can be supported. Another feature is security policy enforcement. So this enables admins to push the policies via cluster template enforcement and helps ensuring compliance. So on the Rancher setup under settings, there is an important setting, which is cluster template enforcement. So non-admins will be restricted to launching clusters via pre-approved RK templates only. So when the admin turns this setting as true, then a user which wants to launch a cluster will then only be able to launch a cluster using an RK template and revision. They won't be able to uh, uncheck this option. So this will always be checked and the user will always have to select an RK template. So using this feature, the admins can enforce security policies. This was about the RK template and its benefits. Now next step is a CNCF security best practices. So when Kubernetes security breaches um, were detected, CNCF released nine security best practices. When you launch a cluster via Rancher, these security best practices are easily followed. We can gloss over each of them and then I can walk through how these are followed via Rancher. So first and foremost, it's stay up to date with latest versions. Now, new security features and not just bug fixes, they are added in every quarterly release of Kubernetes and Kubernetes releases are often. Whenever a CAV is detected, a community CVA patch will be released as soon as possible. So it is important to patch your clusters with the latest Kubernetes releases as soon as they are released in order to minimize uh, security breaches on your clusters. Now, in order to do this, um, it's also important that whenever a Kubernetes release is published, you minimize the necessity of releasing your own software. How Rancher does this is Rancher is actually rendering in the upstream Kubernetes uh, artifacts. So whenever Kubernetes release happens, there would have been always a need of releasing Rancher as well in order to provide this newly published Kubernetes release. But to avoid that, Rancher Kubernetes upgrades can now be streamed without upgrading Rancher. So all the community's metadata that Rancher uses is stored separately um, and it is synced periodically by Rancher. So whenever some update is pushed to this metadata, it will periodically be synced by Rancher and your Rancher cluster will get the upgrade without needing a release of Rancher cluster itself or a upgrading the Rancher cluster itself. So using this technique, a Rancher cluster can be uh, made up to date with latest Kubernetes versions very quickly. RBAC. Now, Kubernetes uses role based access control by default. Uh, and RBAC is very important to be turned on to make your cluster as secure as possible. Now, RBAC is enabled by default on RKE and Rancher clusters. Rancher enables roles at global level cluster level and project level. If you are launching a cluster using RK standalone, the Kubernetes RBAC is always turned on by default. But if it is a standalone RK cluster, you will have to go and create your own accounts and the cluster roles and role bindings. But if you're launching a cluster through Rancher, then Rancher enables and does all these heavy lifting and creates the necessary roles at cluster, project, and global level. Now, Rancher proxies all the communication to all the downstream communities clusters that you're launching via Rancher server. And Rancher server itself can be, access to Rancher server can be guarded by strong controls for authentication. So Rancher has 
integrations available for various authentication providers. And using one of these providers, you can basically bubble up the authentication mechanism of your enterprise, uh, like Active Directory or SAML, to your rancher's server. So all the users which are trying to access their Kubernetes clusters on the rancher will have to first authenticate with rancher server, and then they'll get access to their downstream cluster. The next one is namespaces or security boundaries. Now, namespaces are very much important to establish security boundaries. It is defining your application into logical groups. Now, Rancher defines, along with namespaces, an additional layer of abstraction, which is called a project. Project is basically a group of namespaces. And to a project, one can assign roles. Thus, users belonging to a project will have to follow those roles. And typically, the users which are or the applications that are running in a project cannot see or access the applications that are running in another project. So using project concept over the namespaces uh, boundaries, one can achieve multi-tenancy within a Kubernetes cluster in Rancher. Now, in order to walk through this RBAC and namespaces on a Rancher cluster, let's go back to the Rancher setup. So under your downstream cluster, this is a user cluster that I have, there's a tab for projects and namespaces. So default is the Kubernetes default namespace. Using this tab, you can always add a new namespace. And you, using add project, you can as well group various namespaces under one project. You can assign resource quotas to the project or resource limits and also then assign members of the project. Now, the other thing that I talked about is the RBAC. On Rancher Global View, there's a security tab and under which you have for guarding access to your Rancher server, authentication tab. Under authentication, you have various integrations available uh, for example, Active Directory, LDAP, Azure ID, GitHub, SAML. So Rancher is able to integrate with all these auth providers uh, in order to secure your uh, access to the Rancher clusters. Then, in order to support rollback access control, under security, you also have a tab for roles. Whenever you launch clusters using Rancher, Rancher has already established certain global level roles, cluster level roles, and project level roles. So you can choose which roles can be applied to your cluster or to your projects inside the cluster. Also, an admin can add a cluster level role for the downstream cluster. Using the add cluster tab, you can grant resources which specific uh, Kubernetes resources have what particular access, as well as you can inherit from an already created or predefined role. Same functionality is available for a project level role as well. This way, Rancher is able to provide role based access control and authentication. Going back to the CNCF guideline is next one CNCF puts down is separating your sensitive work groups. So what happens uh, likely when a security breach happens? If a security breach happens for your application, then the neighboring applications or the security threat to the other nodes or other application is, all, uh, is also there. So in order to minimize the security threat impact, it is important to separate out the critical workloads and schedule them on to separate nodes or dedicated nodes. Kubernetes has 10 cent tolerations available for scheduling sensitive workloads to particular nodes. Along with this, Rancher also provides a mechanism for scheduling your workload to particular nodes using Kubernetes labels. 
So if you go to a cluster which is launched in Rancher, and if I go to a project that is present in my cluster, under resources, you will see workloads. If I try to deploy a workload, and if I want my workload to go on a specific node, then in Rancher, you can specify if you want to run all parts of this workload on a specific node, and you can make sure that security of that node is taken care of and the node has been configured per CIS benchmark. You can also use Kubernetes labels, label the node and specify the labels to be used by this um, workload deployment and the parts of this workload will be then deployed on the nodes of the matching label. So along with Kubernetes tents and toleration, Rancher also supports Kubernetes label-based workload scheduling in order to separate sensitive workloads. Next is securing cloud metadata. Now this best practice actually applies more to the cloud provider like GKE, where if there is a metadata flowing between various components of your cloud provider, it is essential to encrypt that metadata and make sure cloud credentials or credentials to your kubelet, kube proxy, they are not uh, available for security breaches. Next to cluster network policies and pod security policies are very important constructs in order to harden your Kubernetes cluster. Cluster network policies, using these you can define what network access is allowed to your pod and from your pods. Now, in order to enable cluster network policies, one needs to use a network provider like Canal or Calico. When you launch a cluster on Rancher, Rancher by default uses Canal network provider. So it is possible to launch cluster network policies on Rancher launch clusters from the start. Also, Rancher supports project network isolation. So using the network provider Canal, it is possible to make um, define that the network bit traffic between projects is isolated in order to demonstrate that let me go back to my test cluster so when i launch a cluster along with kubernetes option Rancher gives you an option of selecting your network provider. By default, Canal is selected in order to establish network uh, provider policies. And another construct that is available is project network isolation. This is disabled by default, but if you enable it, it means that your pods launched in one project or pods that are running in namespaces grouped under one project can talk to only other workloads within that project and they cannot access the workloads outside the project. So if I enable this project network isolation on my cluster, then Rancher will be facilitating this isolation by default. The next one is pod security policies. Now pod security policy basically defines what configuration a pod is allowed to have in order to launch in your Kubernetes cluster. So in using a pod security policy, an admin can um, define that a pod cannot come up using privileged mode or a pod cannot use host networking. These kind of policies can be predefined use, uh, by the admin. And these pod security policies can then be applied to a cluster so that any pod coming up in the cluster has to follow this policy. For a cluster that is launched via our Rancher or RK, you can choose if you want a restricted pod security policy enabled by default. Also, an admin can create or define their own pod security policies using Rancher and apply them to their Kubernetes clusters. So 
under security at the global view, there is a tab for pod security policies. In here, out of the box, there are two pod security policies, restricted and unrestricted, that is always available with Rancho. So under restricted pod security policy, basically privilege escalation is disallowed and host networking is not allowed. A privilege pod or a container cannot come up when a cluster is using a pod security policy of type restricted. Admin can then also define their own pod security policy and make sure that only the resources that they want um, the users to access are available or the applications to access are available and they can deny the access to other resources using PSPs. Once you launch a Kubernetes cluster via Rancher, then you can select the pod security policy under advanced options. So you can enable a pod security policy and then select the pod security policy of your choice. Now, for example, on my test cluster, I can go and edit this cluster and then enable the pod security policy. I already have a policy defined, see my policy and go and update this cluster. Now let's, while the cluster is updating, we can take a look at what this policy is. This my policy in this, basically, I have defined that host ports for any workloads or any application that are using host ports, the ports have to be 6,004 or uh, up to 7,000. So an application who is trying to use a host port outside this range, that pod cannot come up in my cluster. So while this cluster is being updated, what uh, using this pod security policy we can demonstrate is basically if I go and try to deploy a workload and add a host port with say any port which is outside the range I had defined, then this pod for this workload won't be able to come up because of the pod security policy that I have applied on my cluster. So thus, the cluster network policies and pod security policies are important Kubernetes constructs that are available to secure your Kubernetes clusters and Rancher facilitates them or makes them available when you are launching a cluster via Rancher. The next security best practices is node security benchmark and audit logging. Now node security benchmarks we talked about is basically securing your nodes as per the Rancher's CIS benchmark hardening guide. As we have seen, there is a list of CIS benchmarks or uh, constructs that one should follow in order to harden the nodes before launching a Kubernetes cluster on those. And Using this Rancher published hardening guide, one can make sure that the nodes are CIS compliant to start with. Lastly, audit logging. Now, Kube API server supports audit logging. So using basic Kubernetes construct of audit logging, one can log any operation that is happening in your Kubernetes cluster, like which service account is accessing what resource and um, any uh, access errors that have seen, for example, forbidden access errors can be logged in the audit logs. And using these audit logs, one can go and also integrate uh, them with alerting tools and the stakeholders can be notified when, say, forbidden access is seen in the audit logging. Now, on top of the Kubernetes audit logging, Rancher also supports audit logging for the Rancher API server. So any access that is happening for Rancher via the Rancher API server can also be logged um, via the Rancher audit logging support. Rancher provides integration with logging tools like Splunk, Elasticsearch, Fluent, Kafka, and all these 
um, operations that are happening or access that are happening via the Rancher API server can also be logged to these tools. Thus, audit logging, one can use the Cube API server as well as using Rancher, one can also use another extra layer of audit logging, which is available via Rancher API server. So these are the CNCF best practices one can follow. And using Rancher, all of these are inherently followed and your cluster is hardened to start with. So in summary, how to harden your Kubernetes clusters with Rancher is A, first you can follow CIS benchmarks using the Rancher published node hardening guides, as well as the self-assessment guide or the upcoming CS um, scanning tool can help you ensure that your Kubernetes cluster nodes are as per the CS benchmarks. You can use the CS compliant RKE template. So you can specify or predefine all the Kubernetes settings that uh, are compliant as per the CS benchmark in a template and then use this template to launch Kubernetes cluster over and over consistently. Once a cluster has been launched, Rancher's support for CNCF best practices in all aspects, starting from RBAC, namespaces, projects, or pod security policies, network security policies, will help you to ensure that your Kubernetes cluster are secure. Going forward, um, this loop will be completed when a C automated CI scan is also available via Rancher where you can make sure that your cluster is secure to start with and not just to start with but there's an ongoing compliance um, can be achieved by using this on-demand tool and making sure that there is no drift in your Kubernetes cluster launch by a rancher. Now security is um, ongoing topic and we are all here to figure out more and more ways in order to make our Kubernetes clusters secure. And these are few aspects which will help you get started. So with this, Matthew, we can probably jump on to any questions that are there. Fantastic, Prachi, thank you so much. There are a lot, quite a few questions. Um, <clears throat> great, great stuff. So let's jump in here. Um, this one is from Thomas. He says, are all of these operations available via the Rancher API for implementing in a pipeline or CI CD workflow? So using the Rancher Terraform provider or the Rancher uh, cluster API, one can always pass uh, things like cluster template where you define all the CIS compliant settings and you can define a cluster template also via APIs and using the Terraform provider, you can pass in the cluster template and revision of your choice to launch a cluster by a rancher. And then all these settings will be followed when rancher launches the cluster. Awesome, thank you. Okay, this next one is from Michael who asks, uh, what rancher release is targeted for the CIS scan? So rancher, the next rancher release, which is the 2.4, is targeted for the Rancher's automated CI scan. Um, I think last week we already had an online meetup talking about the scan, and there is also an alpha release available for you to try out this upcoming feature. Great, thank you. Okay, here's the next one from um, Jim, who says, uh, can the cluster template be cloned by a customer and modified for their specific settings? Yes, a cluster template can be cloned uh, and a revision can be created on top of the RK compliant um, cluster template. So in order to go back to my setup, I can quickly show how to clone a cluster template. So if an RK template is already created with a certain configuration that it's saved in its first revision, one can always go back and clone this revision and create a new revision. So what this operation facilitates is all the configuration that has been saved in the first version of the template is already populated in this next version and a customer or an admin can go and modify 
um, as per their needs and create, say, another revision of the same template, which can uh, then be published to your user base. for use to launching the Kubernetes clusters. So yeah, cloning a template is available. Awesome, and uh, so this is sort of a related question on about these RKE templates. Um, can we make changes to and on the cluster after applying the RKE template? Once a cluster has been launched using RKE template, in order to go and edit that cluster, what you have to do is basically all the updates of that that you want to push you need to publish a new revision of that template with the necessary updates that you want to push and then you can go and edit a cluster now this cluster is not created via an rk template but suppose it was then once you go and edit a cluster it would give you let uh, you know what let me go and try to see if I can demonstrate that. So you are launching a cluster and you have to select the RK template in order to go and launch your cluster. Now I selected version one for this template and suppose I go and launch this cluster. Now, when this cluster becomes active and you have some updates to be pushed, what you can do is make these updates available as a separate revision. And then once you edit this cluster, you can always go and choose the second revision, which is available of your template. Now, this cluster currently is provisioning, but suppose it was active it would have let me go and uh, go and update this cluster to v2 which is the next revision available for this template so this way you can push updates to a cluster uh, using cluster template great <clears throat> excellent um and just so everybody knows we did do an online meetup um a couple months ago just on really focusing on rke templates and that is on youtube so you can uh, find out more there too um, okay, let's move on to a different topic. Uh, this one is from Oliver who asks, what's the best security practice uh, regarding disaster recovery to go with persistent volumes via local storage provisioner or with Longhorn? So I think instead of the local um, volume, it will be always good to go with a provisioner like Longhorn. With respect to disaster recovery, um, I think we will be delving deep into this topic in our upcoming meetup. So probably you can find more information there. Yeah, I, I agree. I was just about to say yeah, next week on Monday, Patrick, um, one of our support engineers is gonna be focusing on disaster recovery and that's a great place to talk about uh, security there too. Um, okay, so here's the next one. This is from Kyle who asks, can you apply different PSPs to different pods or is it cluster wide? PSP is cluster wide. So when you launch a cluster, you have to select a pod security policy, which is um, applied to all pods coming up in the cluster. Okay, cool. Um, and, and this is a related question. This is from Danant who asked, is there a common and, uh, commonly advised best practice for setting up uh, PSPs? So as a best practice already, Rancher has two pre predefined uh, pod security policies available in the security tab. So unrestricted is the one which uh, is probably lenient and restricted is the one which will disallow uh, many things and it would make sure that your cluster stays secure with uh, in, in a lot of aspects. So these two restricted and unrestricted are always available out of the box from Rancher and can be followed as a first step of best practices with respect to PSPs. Thank you. <clears throat> and this, um, this one's from Michael, so we're just gonna keep going. Uh, this is from Michael. He's referring to a, a part in the presentation a little earlier when you said not allowing host networking 
to a pod. Do you remember that? And if you do, what what does that mean to not allow host networking to a pod? So as part of the PSP, for example, the restricted uh, pod security policy, you can um, say that the pod is not able to use host network. So uh, in this way, you can make sure that your workload or the apps coming up in your uh, host, they are not able to access your host uh, resources um, and they are able to use only the resources that uh, that you want them to allow. So for more details, I would say that uh, you will have to go in and see like what specific host networking things that you can protect using this pod security policy construct. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, here's another one. This is from um, Ali, who says, we have created, um, so we've given a little scenario. So they've created an HA setup of Rancher with RKE basic configuration and created a Kubernetes cluster. There, she's asking, or he's asking, can we apply uh, security policies for existing clusters and upgraded uh, upgrade Rancher setups? Yes, yes, you can definitely, for example, this uh, cluster, I can your downstream cluster you can go and update them edit them and apply port security policies to and if it was disabled you can toggle it to enable and select a port security policy that you have defined or use the out of the box PSPs and go and update your clusters Cool, thank you. Okay, here's the next one. Um, <clears throat> this is a different topic. Can you talk about um, Cube Hunter versus Cube Bench? Your your opinions and what we need to know. So, um, Cube Bench definitely launches uh, CI scanning or CI benchmark scanning per node. So it is related to one node. And what our CI scanning is doing tool that is upcoming is doing is launching kubebench on every node of your kubernetes cluster as a daemon set so instead of just using kubebench for one node the ci scanning tool can basically launch kube uh, kubebench on all the nodes and gather a cluster wide scan report for cube hunter which just got i think published recently um, i don't have much details on it right now but I think it is an amazing tool that is upcoming from Aqua uh, that even we should be uh, looking at in order to integrate with. Great, yeah, and I'll just mention um, later in, in a few weeks in February, I think February 25th, we're, we're gonna have a master class and it's already posted just on Cube Hunter and Cube Bench. So be sure to uh, join that one so you can really get a, get a deep dive into that. Um, Okay, there are a few questions that are a little bit outside of um, the topic, but I'm just going to ask them and we can see what you what you suggest, Brachi. This is from Felipe, who says, mm -hmm. um, "What's the best backup strategy when it comes to restoring Kubernetes core components like etcd?" So, for the back backing up, what Rancher provides is etcd uh, snapshot policy is already provided. Uh, for example. When you are launching a cluster right here, uh, you can see that you have you can enable recurring etcd snapshot option, and when you say yes, uh, then you can also specify a periodic interval at which etcd will be um, backed up, and this will be a periodic uh, uh, snapshot uh, process that Rancher will follow. So you can launch a cluster and select this recurring snapshot policy in order to back up your cluster, uh, back up your etcd node um, over a period of time. And I think that would be a very good uh, place to start uh, with respect to backing up etcd. Awesome, thank you. Okay, here's here's another one. I know we're coming up right at the right at the end of our time, but <clears throat> we can just get a few more in here. This is from Alad who says. Is node hardening different from cluster hardening? And if so, how is node, node hardening done? So for node hardening, yes, that's exactly uh, what the hardening guide for Rancher is all about. This is about the nodes that you choose in order to launch a Kubernetes cluster. 
So for the node security benchmark uh, that CIS has published, there the each hardening guide for each rancher version um, also specifies what particular uh, configuration your nodes should follow so that a, when a cluster of Kubernetes components of the Kubernetes cluster are launched over that node, um, the node itself is CIS compliant and able to support the Kubernetes, uh, secure the Kubernetes cluster, which is uh, like pods and containers that are part of the Kubernetes cluster and launched on the nodes are secure to start with it. So for example, the hardening guide will um, go and specify, uh, say, set the VM over commit memory or uh, go and specify that what, what is the particular HCD custom user that you need to set for and provide a UID and GID uh, of it to the community's launching process so that whenever HCD comes up, the user that you have created on your node, that particular custom user is used to launch the HCD process. So all such things that getting a node ready in order for Kubernetes cluster components to come up, all these steps are mentioned uh, as part of node hardening in the uh, hardening guide from Rancher. Awesome. Um, okay, I'm just going to ask one more question, and then and then I think we should call it because we we are over time. Um, this is um, this person says a security hardening has to be applied on the master node or any specific nodes in the cluster um master node definitely needs to follow the node hardening guide because this is the node that you will be using to launch the kubernetes control plane as well as any worker nodes also carry kubernetes components like the kube proxy or the kubelet so worker nodes also need to follow certain node security guidelines so it's not just uh, about master node, it is about the entire uh, community's cluster that you need to think through for um, hardening the cluster. Excellent, so good. Thank you so much, Prachi. Is there anything else you you want to leave us with before we wrap up? Um, I think that's uh, that's about it today. Okay, great. Well, I am gonna um, share my screen. If you could stop sharing and I'll share my screen. I just want to leave everybody with um, a slide I showed at the beginning. Let me see if I can make myself the presenter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't just break my machine. <clears throat> Well, I was hoping to be able to, oh, there we go. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the um, upcoming classes because we have three more, four more really in the next seven days, so seven to eight days. So it would be a great opportunity to talk more about um, some of the stuff. I saw a few questions just around troubleshooting Kubernetes and we have a class on that next week and another you know, that we heard on disaster recovery and that'll be this coming Monday. Um, so you know, please check those out. Uh, so you have uh, more opportunity to ask your questions and get them answered. And there were a few questions in the chat that didn't uh, get to get that we didn't get to. Um, so please post those on Slack uh, so that you do get those answered. Um, and other than that, thank you all so much. We will uh, email you all the recording and the slides um, after everything has been uh, processed and go to webinar, um, and we'll post it on YouTube as well. So thanks so much, and Prachi, thank you again. Thank you so much.